Hello guys, Deuteran slash Learn Swain here, and um, today I'm going to demonstrate some, well, show you guys some changes in the new LOS dev board uh, firmware progress thing. So there's not much. Right now, as you can see, I have image loading working. I'll show you what that red square is for in a second. Um, it took me quite a while to get used to the library and stuff. Most of the things I've been working on, you don't act, you're not actually seeing here on the screen. Uh, I updated my development software and stuff to make uploading to this easier, so it's no longer a five minute process. Well, not really five minutes, like five seconds. But it required a lot of clicking, now it requires like a few clicks less. Still a lot of clicking, but um, it's better now, so yeah. Um, so here we have the old LOS wallpaper from the guy who I, whose name I can't remember. He recently contacted me about something, though. Um, it was a pretty cool thing. He came up with this idea for a, I don't know, a credit card-sized e-paper display thingamajig. It's complicated. I'm not going to explain it because I don't have much time. Um, now that little red square over there follows... A, sort of anti-follows the cursor because my calibration is still completely off. I'll explain this calibration problem later. So what's pretty cool about this, or the reason I'm showing you this, is because this was completely impossible in the previous LOS version, or at least the method I'm using was completely impossible. Because you couldn't read from the screen and there was not enough RAM for a frame buffer. This still doesn't have enough RAM for a frame buffer, however I can read from the screen. So what's actually happening every frame is it's reading... Well, there, Okay, so it begins with no square on the screen. It then reads what's in the area where the square is going to be, so where it's going to render the square. And it saves that to RAM, then it renders the square, and then it waits a few milliseconds and then it writes the over the square with the old data that was in the position of the square and draws the square at a new location in the same process. So it's a little infinite loop. If you look really closely, I'm not sure if the camera captures it, but the square is slightly flickering. That's from the from it clearing and putting it back on. And this is very basic operation on a computer because they have frame buffers. So you have, you know, the cursor on a, or a mouse on the screen or having multiple windows and all that. But this opens up a lot of possibilities for LOS, like scrolling command windows, pop-ups that can disappear without destroying whatever was on the screen previously. And most importantly, um, application save states. So much like an emulator, you can sort of save the state of an application and pause it is going to be extremely useful in uh, newer, in when I get LOS working. So you could have multiple applications paused and then you can continue running them later. Now you could technically do this on the old LOS, but the problem was it wouldn't save what was on the screen. So the program would assume that all the buttons and stuff that it drew were already on the screen because it doesn't know that it was, that it was paused and resumed. So that was kind of a problem, would have been kind of a problem, so I never implemented that, but now I can. Um, so I'm still going to need to work on that, it's going to take quite a while. So another thing, the screen calibration problem, I'm having a lot of trouble with this touch screen, really. So for, for, first of all, to calibrate it, I need to run this really buggy calibration program thing. And it's completely separate from LOS. It's a completely separate application. You need to uninstall LOS and install the calibrator. And because it's not really working for the TFT display, because it assumes some other display, and I, I don't remember the model number. This is an SSD1289 controller, but it relies on some other controller, and it doesn't work so well. I've tried to integrate it in LOS. It failed. Uh, because it's all this complicated C++ class and pointer mechanics. 
Uh, I still don't know when to use ampersands and asterisks. They seem to do very similar things. Except the one does the opposite of the other, of course. The one gives the address, the ampersand, and the asterisk is what's at that address. But, um, yeah. So, I'm probably, to teach myself C++, I guess, I'm going to create my own touchscreen library. Because I've been doing all this weird post-processing to try and invert this. You know, the basic subtract by screen size and multiply by negative one. But it's still off. As you can see, the y-axis, or x-axis actually, should be correct. It looks correct, but even that is off. This should be in the exact center of the touch marker. And another thing, these, this is a resistive touch screen, so you need to calibrate it. And if I'm going to do a production build or something, I can't include it in LOS because of the aforementioned problem with the classes being so complicated. So I'm just going to make my own one, start over. It's going to teach me some C++, which is going to be useful for making LOS, so I'm not making LOS and halfway through I realize I could have done that so much easier way in C++ and that code was written so terribly because I'm not good in C++ yet. So I'm going to do that as practice, but it does show that this is going to take really long to develop. And I'm quite proud of this reading the screen, and um, it's actually quite fast, you can't really see it because I'm still using some manual CPU based copy paste systems to get the picture to load but this thing actually has quite a few advantages over the old version that I forgot to mention it has an FSMC controller or something built into the chip so that allows it to communicate with the display a lot faster it's hardware acceleration instead of simply setting values to the registers and as fast as possible as it was previously. Same with the SD card, there's actually SDIO controller on board so that manages all that stuff for you in a single well, clock cycle compared to the Arduino which would do everything through um, some sort of communication that would take a lot longer because it would have it wasn't designed to communicate with SD cards that can microcontroller used in the Arduinos. So this is this would work a lot faster. I could still get it to work a lot faster. It's already working pretty fast, but as you can see the image loading. I could get that to load faster if I can get some hardware acceleration working. But right now it's already pretty fast. Final thing I want to talk about is really annoys me. You don't actually notice it when there's only a single color on the screen, like red, which I had for the previous version, which just command prompt text display like you can see in the first second or so of boot up. Um, but this side of the screen, you can view it just fine. This side of the screen, tilted just a degree, and it's completely unviewable. Now, it's even worse with the naked eye. The camera sort doesn't capture. You can see, you can still read it, LOS even from this angle, but tilt it slightly and there, it's completely gone. You can see the rectangle. Well, you can still read it, but it's really terrible. That's because this dev board was actually designed to be held like this. Well, sort of, anyway. So, you'd view it perfectly fine like this, but um, because of some driver constraints and changes and stuff that I need to make to get SDM32 Plus working, I have to view it like this, with the terrible viewing angle. Now it is some random cheap Chinese display, and this isn't a, uh, this isn't like a Kindle or a iPhone with the perfect retina, full color, true to life color display of super high resolution, it's just some random cheap Chinese touchscreen. Because, of course, LOS doesn't really need all that really fancy stuff. Mainly because it's pretty damn hard to use. If you The more complex things get, the harder it is to drive. You might think it's still a color screen. What's the difference? Well, they have a lot more advanced features in those, like dual frame buffering. And, well, that's pretty cool, but it becomes really difficult to just 
draw a simple square, a little simple little red square on a picture, which is what I'm doing right now. So things get quite complicated quite fast. Um, at least I assume they do. I'm, and it's also really, really expensive. So, um, yeah. Now, one tiny last thing I forgot to mention. In the last video I said it gets a little warm under here. Some people seem to think that meant that this place you could boil an egg on. No, it's just a little warm. You can tell the difference by putting your finger on whether or not it's on. But that's about it. It doesn't get boiling hot and stuff, it's not enough to damage a LiPo battery, at least. My phone gets a lot hotter, it becomes so hot you can't even hold it, and the battery on it is still perfectly fine. And for something like this, that's being hacked together by a teenager, versus something that was made by a professional multi-million dollar company, which gets really hot, versus something that doesn't get hot at all by a teenager, you know... I don't think it's going to damage the battery. If they can do it, then I can as well with a lot smaller heat levels. Of course, my Samsung Galaxy S2 probably uses a much fancier battery than I'll be using, but it's still LiPo, it's still the same chemicals and stuff. So yeah, that's it. Thanks for watching, hope you enjoyed it. Uh, comment, rate, subscribe. I just like doing that for some reason. Look. It's, Scrambled, scrambled, and it's completely fine. And it's scrambled all over the place, and it's completely fine. I'm making a few artifacts at the bottom. No, but yes, comment, rate, subscribe. Hope you enjoyed it. LOS development's still gonna go a bit slow, so don't expect as many videos as there was for the previous LOS version. And bye.